Venezuela's parliamentary election progresses normally. This Sunday, Uruguay's broad front communicated the death of former President Tabaré Vázquez. This Saturday, the United States registered about 230,000 new cases of COVID-19. From the headquarters of Telesur English in Havana, Cuba, this is From the South. I'm Gladys Quesada. This Sunday, Venezuela's parliamentary elections progresses normally. Since early morning, Venezuelans go to the 14,200 authorized voting centers. While waiting for their turn, citizens highlight the need to renew the parliament to respond to the needs of the people. On this occasion, about 21 million people are called to elect 277 deputies. Sunday's parliamentary elections are being held with biosecurity measures to prevent the spread of COVID-19. In the framework of the Republic Plan, 250,000 members of the Bolivarian National Armed Force safeguard the democratic process. And Venezuela's Defense Minister, Vladimir Padrino, informed that no incidents have occurred so far during the elections. Padrino pointed out over 250,000 members of the FANB protect the electoral centers and highlighted that it's a safe process. The armed forces have participated in the simulations, in the electoral events, in the deployment of technological and non-technological equipment, and of course in the securing of all electoral infrastructures, at a national level and at a regional level. It has been an important deployment today. More than 370,000 assets are deployed among the armed forces, the Bolivarian militia, and also citizen security bodies, which guarantee not only the physical security of borders, but also of all electoral equipment, and also biosecurity, which is a very important mission given by the President, so that together with the National Electoral Council, we can guarantee all the conditions for epidemiological control, that is, so that this does not become a focus of contagion. The president of the National Electoral Council, Indira Alfonso, said that by the afternoon they must start the voting results due to the speed of the voting machines. She also informed that in 14,221 voting centers in 24 states, where 87 electoral districts, Venezuelans will have the right to vote. All the Venezuelan people will have the opportunity today, December the 6th, to vote with freedom and sovereignty. I've asked that you all to be present today. Me, as a Venezuelan, just voted as is my right in this educational institution where we have 13 voting stations completely functional and more than 12,000 Venezuelans are going to vote. I came here to vote freely with sovereignty and democracy, trusting completely in what has been the enforcing of an electoral service by the National Electoral Commission, where they have been guaranteed all and each one of the conditions to exert our vote rapidly, efficiently, but most of all in a safe and trustable manner. It is time to vote. It is time to elect and to participate. You are the person who is going to choose among the proposals of about 90% of political organizations of the country. The candidate that you prefer in order to have, in the afternoon or in the night time, the announcement of the 277 elected deputies for the National Assembly in the period from 2021 to 2026. Well, Venezuela, we are rejoicing in a democratic celebration come to participate and vote. And this Sunday, Uruguay's broad front communicated the death of former President Tabaré Vázquez, who died after suffering from lung cancer diagnosed in August last year. On his Twitter account, the broad front wrote, with deep sorrow, we communicate the death of our honorary president, Tabaré Vázquez, his example of political integrity and unbreakable commitment to our country and the people will drive us to continue his legacy. Tabaré Vázquez was one of the most important political leaders in the history of Uruguay, twice President of the Republic and the architect of the policies that allowed the people to move forward in overcoming poverty and inequality.
In Guatemala, social movements and students march for the third consecutive week in the capital to demand the resignation of President Alejandro Giammattei and the creation of a national constitute assembly. Student movements from various universities convoked the mobilization that began from the Guatemala municipality and went to the Plaza de la Constitución, the Constitution Square, where the National Palace is located. Shouting the slogan, while there is a person, there will be a constitution, they demand the resignation of all members of the executive power. The alliance called for the establishment of a national constitute assembly of a plurinational character to refound a new state that guarantees fundamental rights for the population. Representatives of labor, indigenous and campesino movements also join the demands and call on citizens to participate in the upcoming mobilizations. And the systematic assassinations of social and indigenous leaders continue in Colombia after a new massacre was confirmed this Sunday morning in the Department of Cauca. Senator Feliciano Valencia and users of social networks confirmed the murder of at least four indigenous people in the town of Santander, also in the municipality of Quilichao, in the Department of Cauca. According to the reports, several armed men broke into a farm and shot indiscriminately. Because of this event, there is also a person injured being treated at the hospital in Santander. And we remain in Colombia, where on Saturday registered 9,642 new infections and 116 deaths from COVID-19. According to the data provided by the Ministry of Health, with this new figure, the country registers a total of 1,362,000 cases and more than 37,000 deaths since the beginning of the pandemic. At the same time, authorities reported that 3,011 patients remained confined in intensive care units. Also, more than 8,000 patients have been discharged, bringing the total number of patients recovered to date to 1,2049,000. And we'll be right back after this very short break, so don't go away. Welcome back to From the South. This Saturday, the United States registered about 230,000 new cases of coronavirus and broke its record of contagion for the third consecutive day. A new surge of the pandemic is taking place in the country, registering 229,859 infections in only 24 hours. According to the John Hopkins University toll, 2,527 new fatalities were registered on Saturday due to the respiratory disease. To this date, the United States reports a total of 14,567,000 cases of infection and over 281,000 deaths, leading the world in pandemic statistics. And now we are going to Russia, where Moscow authorities estimate to vaccinate about 6 or 7 million people against the new coronavirus. In a new interview for local media, the mayor of Moscow, Sergei Sobyanin, stated that between 6 and 7 million people must be immunized in a gradual process. Sobyanin emphasized the need to improve the digital registration mechanism for vaccination, as well as the logistics of the cold chain of the vials. 
The first 70 vaccination centers in Moscow open on Saturday in the morning also for a total of 170 that will become operational. People from the groups define as a priority. Employees from the education, health and social services sectors will be able to get vaccinated voluntarily and free of charge. Also, Russia registered this Sunday a new record in positive cases of COVID-19. The National Operational Center for the Fight Against the Coronavirus reported that in November 29th, 39 infections were detected for a total of 2,460,000 cases. Of this, more than 1,900,000 have been recovered. Likewise, a figure of 457 fatalities was reported, which raises to more than 43,000 of the number of deaths due to the pandemic. Most of the infections were reported in Moscow, which remains the city most affected by the pandemic in the country. Thousands of protesters rallied in Moldova's capital on Sunday, demanding the government's resignation and snap parliamentary elections. Moldova last month elected pro-European Maya Sandu to the presidency, earning her a surprise victory over pro-Russian incumbent Igor Dodon. After Moldovan lawmakers this week passed a bill transferring control of the country's intelligence agency from the president to parliament, Sandu called for her supporters to rally on Sunday. She and her supporters said the goal of the legislation was to reduce the presidency before Sandu takes office and to boost parliament, where the Don's supporters outnumbered the opposition. More than 5,000 people rallied on Thursday against the move. On Sunday, more than 20,000 protesters gathered at the square in front of the parliament building. Residents of Happy Valley on Fraser Island in Queensland have been told to immediately evacuate their properties as the bushfire front worsened on Sunday. Queensland Fire and Emergency Services elevated the bushfire warning to an emergency warning level on Sunday afternoon. There is also a separate prepare to leave warning in place for Kingfisher Bay, the resort and also the village. A QFE spokesperson said firefighters may not be able to protect every property and homeowners should not expect firefighters at the door. The blaze was sparked by an illegal campfire seven weeks ago and has blackened almost half of Fraser Island. More than 80,000 hectares of land have been burnt so far. We're doing everything we can to contain it, uh, but it is tough conditions. It's tough terrain uh, and it is a fire which is tricky to put out. Uh, we've been using significant resources today. Uh, today, I'm advised that there are more than 90 personnel in 38 vehicles and 17 aircraft working on Fraser Island, uh, and that includes the large uh, air tanker, uh, which is based in Queensland for the bushfire season. Uh, I am also advised as well that the New South Wales-based large aircraft tanker uh, will be sent to Queensland tomorrow to assist in our firefighting efforts. And we have more stories coming up after this financial break, so stay with us. Welcome back to From the South. And now, regarding the parliamentary elections in Caracas, we send our signal to Telesur Studios in Caracas, Venezuela, where our colleague Ray Gomez has more details about this election process in the South American nation. Welcome, Ray.
Candidates from 107 political organizations are participating. At the end of the vote, the 277 deputies that are being elected should remain for the legislative period 2021-2026. The National Assembly is one of the five powers of the Venezuelan state. It has a purpose to legislate in manners of national competence and regarding the functioning of the different branches of the national power. On Twitter, the permanent representative of Venezuela to the UN, Samuel Moncada, has said the following, quote, Trump desperately escalated on his aggressions towards elections in Venezuela. The sovereign people ends today with the band of puppets that USA and its allies used to colonize the nation. Voting is a patriotic act. Everyone for vote or to vote a man for Venezuela. After exercising her right to vote early this morning in Caracas, Venezuela's Vice President Daza Rodriguez made reference to the ongoing siege the nation is victim of. Community, I have to say that Venezuela continues to set an example for the world because despite of the most severe aggressions that our republic has experienced, with this illegal blockade that is a crime against humanity, because it's a systematic violation of Venezuelan human rights. Venezuela is democratically expressing itself here. Venezuela, by voting, is settling its differences at the ballot box. And very important, expressing itself. We know that they have threatened. They have threatened so that in Venezuela there is no vote. From the government of the United States, satellite governments in the world. Europe trying to give orders to Venezuela so that the election will not take place. But we are only given orders by the Venezuelan people and what the constitution of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela mandates. So the day arrived, December the 6th. The day for the democratic exercise arrived. The right to vote and for all of us to go out in this democratic celebration. Regarding the development of the parliamentary elections, Jorge Rodriguez, chief of the campaign command for the Great Patriotic Poll, highlighted that his electoral process is pride reason to all Venezuelans. It's hard to find in any country of this planet an electoral system such as the Venezuelan system. We are highlighting the speed of the voting machines, and we will see how in all automatized process tonight we will have assigned the greatest part of the 277 positions which are in game on today's elections, including the positions as a national deputy, which is also a novelty for this election. The positions for regional list, which are 23 regional lists in addition to the capital district and the positions for the, for the 87 nominal circuits. So the message is that it is the Venezuelan people who speaks is the Venezuelan people who decides, is the Venezuelan people who is called for the election of ballot votes. Venezuela doesn't trespass, doesn't step in, doesn't get involved in the political and electoral business of other countries. And the Bolivian delegation arrived early Saturday morning in Venezuela. The Foreign Minister of Venezuela, Jorge Arreaza, received in Caracas the Bolivian ex-president Evo Morales and Bolivian Senate President Andronica Rodriguez, who are participating as electoral observers in the National Assembly election this Sunday. Jose Luis Rodriguez Zapatero, international observer in Venezuela's parliamentary elections 2020, condemned the sanctions against the Venezuelan people and said this December the 6th represents the beginning of the end for the worst moments that the South American country has had to face. We already know that what we have experienced in the last two years, which serves neither the imposition nor the sanctions, that only dialogue and both serves, which serves only encounter. Coexistence, democratic deliberation, there's no other way. And this election day on December 6, 2020, is a step forward. I dare to say 
that is the beginning of the end of the worst moment, that the beginning of the end of a total conflict, the beginning of the end of uncomprehensible unfair sanctions. I have disagreed with what was mean the choice of several governments, and especially President Trump. No one could fail, no one can fail to assume everyone can understand my radical discrepancy with the Trump administration's strategy towards Venezuela. It was a strategy that started from serious information errors, that I take unfair measures, and that has failed in the results. So we must start another path, another process, and I hope that on that path this day will be the beginning, that those who are far from beginning able to recognize this electoral process reflect as is the lesson learned with all the democratic demand bad, and of course, with all the democratic demands bad, that should never have been forgotten, which we were about to conclude in the Dominican Republic. So we've come to the end of this uh, news brief. You can find these and many other stories on our website, telesurenglish.net. And join us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you for watching. Gladys, back to you. Reflect access, the lesson learned with all the democratic demand bad. And of course, with all the democratic demands bad, that Thank you for these details from Caracas Studios. And we also, despite, we say goodbye to this emission from the South. But remember, you can find this and many other stories on our website, telesurienglish.net. And also, if you feel so inclined, follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Telegram. For Telesur English, I'm Gladys Quesada. Thank you for watching.